did I do wrong? Is it my mask? We're using baby play toys as, what is this, a tripod or a setup? This is a proper chair, bro. Gotta do what you gotta do. She's, she's pissed, bro. Who, Tilly or wife Zilla? Hey, Pippi. Oh. He's monkey will. She said, that's monkey will. Dude, no, she did not monkey say that. Will. She did. Yeah. What? Oh. Monkey will. Yeah, baby. Monkey will. That's racist, you know. Huh? Monkey. No, from your monkey. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I'm canceling Tilly, dude. Oh. She's getting canceled. Yeah. Tilly, ¿cuál es la palabra que papá te dice no hay que decir? Esa que papá se enoja. ¿De quién es esto? Oh, wait. She's talking in French. ¿Y qué más? No, no sé, sorry. She, she's not here to entertain. She's not here to entertain. No, of course not. ¿Me la prestas un ratito? ¿Me la prestas? Prestame un ratito, Pipi, es para, es para hacer un show con, con Tito Wheel. Es Monkey Wheel. Monkey Wheel. Un ratito, Pipi, un ratito chiquitito. No. No. No me gusta. No va a decir esa palabra que a Papi no le gusta. This is cool, dude. It sounds like narcos. ¿Eh? ¿Qué dijiste? ¿Qué está diciendo? ¿Cuál es la palabra esa que Papi se enoja? No, no, no es esa. No, no. No, what did she say? I don't speak Spanish, French, or the other language you're speaking. Okay. Yes. I will gonna drink it in a bit. Bye. Okay. Oh my God. My entire lifestyle revolves around exploring, outdoor recreation, and finding new activities that allow me to really connect. Now, connect might sound vague, but in simplicity, that's one of the most powerful results of these activities that I undertake. Connection. I, I found myself so many times, so many times, spending time with Hilan and not being present, like thinking about work or thinking about other aspects of my life. And it's like, and in my mind, it's like, wait, I'm, I'm here, I should be enjoying, but like, it, it's hard to turn off that noise. And then the vice versa, I find myself working and feeling guilty because I'm not with Hilan. So like, in different aspects of your life, where, where I am, and that is something that happened to me, I don't know if it, it, it happens to, to other people, but I think when you talk, and, and when I, actually when I see what your content, what you post, and I see you put so much um, emphasis in the three pillars, and I always say, okay, how are my three pillars? What, I'm, what am I missing? And, and then my whole time, this whole time I was thinking, okay, mentally, spirituality, physically, family like I thought it was all different different aspects of your life but then when you realize is no those are the three pillars are you built on it if you're well physically well you're a better father if you're mentally well you enjoy much with your kid you, you, you give them all everything's connected and we must perform certain activities that help us stay connected it's a constant search and the beginning of this one started on a small island in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea called Gozo we met a local named Luke who took us to the forest, taught us how to breathe, and then threw us into the ocean and gave us a crash course on free diving. Before this day, I knew nothing about the sport, but after just a few hours in the ocean, I realized right then and there that this activity was something different. An activity that initiated a sense of hyper-focus that I'd never yet experienced. There is one that is lacking for me, and it's, it's really the, the, the it's not, I don't know if it's the mentally, but it's the, the capability of controlling your mind, right? Like, if I'm with my daughter, I need to be 100% with my daughter. If I'm with my wife, or whatever I'm doing, being 100% doing that thing. And that translates also when I go to bed, right, to, to sleep. I keep thinking. So it's like that aspect, I think if, if we discuss those three pillars, that's the one that I'm, I'm, I'm looking at, like you post and create content about a lot of things. But I try to, to focus when you talk a lot about the spirituality. spirituality and the 360 approach that you have for longevity. 
Yeah, and I wanted to ask you an advice for them, actually. The monkey mind. One of the most common problems that most of us deal with on a daily basis. Being unsettled, restless, or confused. It's also the part of the brain that becomes easily distracted. So if you want to get anything done in life, your challenge will be to shut down the monkey mind. When I was at the bottom of that ocean floor in Gozo, it was one of the first times I really felt like I'd completely shut off the monkey mind. Having a relaxed life is something important, you know? And uh, when I'm out in the sea, to me that's uh, very meditative and I connect with, with the blue world. And that blue world and the other world make me feel balanced. They give me a sense of balance. It's my night time. So it all comes back to time. And I mean, if you aren't on it, then you're gonna miss all these opportunities, these once in a lifetime opportunities. Fast forward almost a year later, and I'm doing an event for one of the most renowned dive watches in the world, Seiko. Alongside the country's most recognized free diver, Marie Sacades. Three-time national record holder, Seiko Prospects endorser, and owner of the premier freediving school, Apnea Philippines. To be the best, you have to learn from the best. So right then and there, I decided to enroll in her course and begin the process of getting certified. And of course, I had to enroll my PA with me because it's her job as well to continue to gain knowledge and learn more skills. We're gonna get you a freediving certification. Huh? Uh... <laughs> Do you know what that is? No. <laughs> Just that it's, it's good for you. You have to keep learning. You have to keep training yourself, acquire new skills. Continue to learn and grow and develop. You learn a new skill, I keep giving you a raise, okay? <laughs> yes, motivation. Ayan, so matututunan natin mag freediving. Because I'm yung pinaka best freediver sa buong Pilipinas. Game ka? What a kind choice. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do when you're alone? I work on myself and I, I continue to grow. So I'm usually like listening to an audiobook. So I'm learning. I'm always learning. And then also physically, I climb. I'm learning how to use different parts, parts of my body so I get in touch with my physical. I practice yoga, balance postures. I'm always teaching myself whether it's physically or mentally. That's just endless, which is why I would, like, I would live forever if I could, if I had that opportunity, because I just have such a drive and passion to just continue to learn. That's all I want to do. Back in school, huh? Sayana? Why don't you come swimming? Sure, huh? Like doggy paddle? <laughs> Under the armpit, yeah. So we just <laughs> ready to come a feel you blow mo. Kailangan ihit. <laughs> Mama tay talaga ako dito. Kung ganon ka magihit. Sige, sapa, try mo, try mo. Sir Will, gising! Sir Will, Sir Will! Ginanon, sinakal-sakal pa kita. Baka di ko maintindihan yung Tagalog mo pag naka-blackout to ko kalangan English. Wake up! Wake up! Hindi naka-wake up. Wake up with the English accent. Baka di ko maintindihan. Di ako magigising dyan eh. Wake up! Wake up! Hello darkness, my old friend. Mamatay talaga ako dito. Mamatay tayo in the next four days. Sige. Ay, kasi bakit kailangan islang pa? Kasi naka-blackout ako, baka hindi ko maintindihan na wake up, wake up, dapat wake up, wake up! <laughs> Nakaintindi ka na mo kasi po ng Tagalog eh. Ay, no Ay nako. After finishing the written part, we were all ready for the pool training. This involved learning the proper techniques, how to hold our breath, how to swim correctly, use the equipment, and then we had to pass a series of tests in order to make it to the ocean training on the following days. Ah! Ah! Did I do it? Yeah. Ah! I was dying! I did it! Day one, 
past and it wasn't easy. I actually believe this is probably one of the most important aspects of life that most people need to focus on. And this is just called mindfulness. That's all it is. It's just being present in, in everything you do. And, and that's why I, I try to live my lifestyle to remind myself to be mindful. It's just you have to constantly remind yourself. How do you do that? You do certain activities that enforce these ideas and I guess these thought patterns. When I brush my teeth, from the moment you start your morning, brush your teeth, I always use my left hand because I'm trying to learn, right? I'm using other muscles, going back to that. Um, but I'm focused and I, I brush every single tooth, one by one. Pe no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I start my day brushing every single tooth and I just try and focus on that. And then I have my 20 minute morning routine where I do my sun salutations and yoga because the easiest way to be mindful about anything is to just focus on your breath. And when you do stretching, stretching is useless if you're not breathing properly. This is something a lot of people don't understand. You have to inhale and then with every exhale, that's the only time your muscles can release. And then when you are focused on your breath, that's when you start to practice your mindfulness. So I, I think my best advice for anyone out there who wants to practice mindfulness and, and wants to start is just take one deep breath, one deep conscious breath every single day. So even if you forget to be mindful throughout the day, at least there's one point in your day where you kind of start to stimulate that, that mindfulness. So right now, just take one deep breath and, and imagine you inhaling the air, going through your body and exhaling and relaxing each muscle point. Thing almusal ko, too big, chaka kape. Kait kailan pag nag perform ako, if I'm doing an activity and I want to be the best, I'm always fasted. Basta I feel light, chaka feeling ko, I'm sharp. Kasi pag may pagkain ako sa chan ko, I feel sluggish, mabigat. Basta, whenever I perform, tubig and black coffee lang. one of the biggest way of meditating like that's yes, when you're yes. self-aware and then and I also believe in the energy you absorb from nature mm. be like I believe there's so much energy when you are in the middle of a forest or when you are like in a lake like when you are not in a city or when there's nothing man-made I believe the energy and, and the vibe going there you absorb so much and from the Sun right like mm. a, a, an ecosystem like that so you okay, well? Yeah. <laughs> Big smile on your face. Was it a good day? Life for me is a constant search. It's a search for meaning. It's a search for thrill, adventure, for simple joys. I'm always looking for the next activity that uplifts me and allows the monkey mind to shut off. This is the main reason I spend so much time doing outdoor activity, as it's a lot easier to experience clarity in this type of environment. Nico and I had an hour and a half discussion about simply trying to find clarity so that we can really take in every moment. And there's no other outdoor experience I've tried that has given me more presence of being than free diving. I'm not necessarily in love with water, I don't love the sun, and I've always had trouble with sitting still or doing anything that requires me to not be moving. But when I'm preparing for my dive, relaxing my entire body, starting from head to toe, locating each and every muscle, and relieving all points of stress, that's when the outer world and all the noise starts to turn off. Each breath that goes in and out of my body plays like a lullaby a cappella that slowly puts the monkey to sleep. Once I have control of my breath, I have control of my life. That's when the hyper-focus starts to kick in. Stress, anxiety, fear, the past, the future, everything starts to dissipate. 
As you get deeper, the road ahead begins to look endless, as does the surface the further you get. But this is why you're not to look back, because that'll only slow you down and promote ideas of turning back. Sound disappears, and the only thing on your mind is each slow and steady movement as you glide through the water descending towards the abyss. And then, all of a sudden you realize you're 26 meters deep at the bottom of the ocean. And you not only realize this superpower that you have, but you are introduced to a whole new world that you never realized was just right there. Twenty-six meters. That was uh, how far I went down today. Good job. Yeah, I, f I feel great right now. I'm super proud of myself. I'm proud of my coaches for helping me out. But like, I want to go back and do this again and again and again. I feel so well after this podcast. Like, it's really like a, this time was a really deep conversation. It was. This was really deep, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's actually. Thanks for coming out. This collaboration with Seiko Watches and Maurice and everything was not only one of the coolest collabs, but one of the best experiences of my entire life. This timepiece not only represents each moment that I live for, but it carries a story behind it. When I look at it, it takes me back to the ocean and reminds me to take a deep breath and slow everything down. I don't often get too caught up with thoughts about the future, but as of recent, I've been susceptible to pondering the past, and when that happens, I let this watch be a reminder to myself that I need to get back to the ocean and remember what being present is all about. On top of that, this particular series, this Save the Ocean edition, makes me, you know, feel good about myself, that uh, supporting a good cause, helping clean the ocean, and reminds you about the sustainability of nature and our waters. So if you guys guys want more details on this specific one that I have or any of the other Save the Ocean watches, then I'll leave that linked in the description below. Before I end this video, I just want to say thank you to Maurice and Apnea Philippines for making me and Shavina become one step closer to becoming superhumans. And you know, it's pretty crazy what Maurice and the team can do to you within two to three days. I mean, Shavina, for instance, she could hold her breath for 10 seconds. She has like anxiety in the water, but after just two Two days in the ocean with proper training, she was able to dive 12 meters and, and really just find a point of relaxation in the ocean and, and, and learn how to control her breath. And once you learn all these skills of free diving, you can uh, apply them to real life. And it's just a really, really healthy activity for you to do both mentally and physically. I really encourage you all to explore free diving. Check it out. Hit up Marie's Apnea Philippines, or if you're not in the Philippines, wherever you are. Shout out to Christian C for taking such awesome underwater photography. We had a really lovely stay at Saltitude Resort, and I can't wait to come back. And if you guys enjoyed me and Nico's talk, I mean, you probably only saw maybe five, seven minutes of our podcast. This was a, an hour long podcast that will probably air next month because we have a long lineup, but just be sure to check it out. We have really similar episodes, just like with Nico, with Maxine Magalona, Hannah Pangalina, Karen Davila, Isabel Daza. I mean, I just did a full week of podcasts with these guests. And yeah, it's all about health. Check out my podcast, link below. And thank you all for joining me on a, another fun vlog. Oh, and last, I'm gonna be in four or five different countries in the next four weeks. So follow me on Instagram and Facebook to keep in touch where I am and see you on the next one. Peace.